What's up, everybody? My name is Adam. I'm one of the game designers for Terrarium. And what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to use the maker mode for our Terrarium level design contest. So when you load up the contest version of Terrarium, what you're going to see is this menu. Um, you're going to click maker mode. You're going to click new level. And what, what we're giving you here is there's four different biomes. Um, they're all different empty templates to make levels with. I'm going to start with the Sun Glow Grove. Uh, it's wide open and it's a forest based biome. Um, I'm going to show you some of the things you can do in the maker mode. So when you load into maker mode, you're in the actual build mode. And so what we see here is this is your actual spawn point and you can click on that spawn point. And if you grab the little box down here, you can move this spawn point around the goal of a terrarium maker mode level is to actually capture this plant. And so if we just leave the spawn point and we go up here to enter quick play, we're given the game mode. And so this is your gardener. You can right click to rotate the camera. You can zoom out and zoom back in with the right bu mouse button clicked in. And you can use the WASD keys to move her around. Now, these are her mugu. They're little mushrooms that she follows her around. These are the heavy mugu and they have very specific characteristics. You can also press the tab button, change to the spicy mugu. And then you can press the tab again and change to the sticky mugu. We'll get into what they all do going forward. But let's stick with the heavy mugu right now. When you make it to the end of the level, what you can actually see is, is that this plant has a five and that means you have to feed it five mugu before you can capture it. If you hold down the shift button, you actually get this aiming target. So I'm gonna aim at the plant's tongue. I'm gonna click the, the, right, uh, the left mouse button. As you can see, we're down to four. So if we feed it four more, this tail's gonna pop. If you grab the tail, you win the level. So we'll take it back out to our maker mode. When you're in this level, the WASD keys are gonna move the camera around so you can actually move and check out your level from all different angles. The right mouse button is still going to actually rotate the camera. So I'm gonna select the spawn point. I'm gonna move it back here. And so once again, as you can see, if we press play, we go back into our mode. So this is gonna be the main action that you do when you're building your levels. If I go back into maker mode, one of the things that you're going to do is you're going to take down your cursor and down here is your menu of all of your assets that you can place. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with monsters first. So if you click on your monster, these are all for this biome and test out all the different biomes because there's different assets for each of them. These are all the monsters that you can use. Now, some of the monsters are static and they actually do things to the Mugu. Others are, have motion. And you can build paths for them. I'm going to show you an example of each. So if we take the hypno bulb, Click on it and drag it in. You can now place it wherever you want. Your WASD keys are gonna move you around. Your camera's still gonna rotate while you hold it. So let's just place this hypno bulb right here. Hit escape to get, not twice to get to the menu, hit escape to get back out. And then we're gonna press play. Now as we move, when we get closer to this thing, what it's gonna do is it's gonna beckon all of our Mugu in and it's gonna keep them trapped over there. So to get your Mugu back, what you're going to want to do is hit the space bar, and that's what we call beckon. And the beckon key actually brings your Mugu to you. So something else to note, if you press the Q button, you can actually make your Mugu stay still so that you can go do some stuff and they'll sleep. But if you get too close to them, they're going to be attracted to you again. So what we can do is we can leave them there, go do some other stuff, come back and get them. We can press Q again. Leave them there, go do some stuff, and hit the space bar to beckon them. One of the things you can use these hypnobulbs for is to actually put up an obstacle to draw Mugu into certain situations. So once they get there, you got a real problem. So you're going to have to beckon them away and then bring them with you. Notice they come back, so it's a constant fight with the hypnobulb. Once you get your Mugu, if you move out of the range of the hypnobulb, at some point they're not going to be drawn in. So if we go back into maker mode, one of the things I want to do now is I want to delete this. So if you click on it, just hit the backspace key and you're going to get rid of it. 
Now, some of these monsters have things you can do with them. So, let's take a look at our Firestorm. Okay, so let's go into her spitter. So, I'm going to place a couple of these down here. Now, one of the things, if we walk these, notice how the fire will kill the Heavy Mugu. But they won't kill the Spicy Mugu. So, this is one of the ways that you can manipulate these objectives. Now, the fire will kill the gardener, so you have to be careful. And these spicy mugu are a little bit uh, fragile. So, that when you shoot one of them, they're actually going to die on contact with the ground. And when we shoot one of these heavy ones, notice how he doesn't die when he hits the ground, but if he hits the fire, that's the end of him. Okay, so these are things that you can use to actually manipulate the players into how they can get the five mugu that they need to the end of the level. So in this case, it's very simple. We just avoid the fire. We head back to the plant. One, two, three, four, five. We go and pick up the bulb and we win. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of these and I'm gonna show you how to path the monster. So if we take Let's say the blue light eater, we place him down here. We use the escape button to get back out. If I select him, notice how I have edit path here. We can also go to the toggle all paths button, which will show you all your monsters paths, but I'm going to create a path. Now what this allows me to do is the WASD keys are actually going to let me set the path and notice that he's now walking back and forth between the path. If I want to set a, a path point, I hit the space bar and it gives me another one and I can drag it around. So what we can do with this is we can set a path for our monster. So I'm just gonna keep going. I want him to pretty much complete a loop before he turns around and goes back. And now we're gonna toggle all the paths. And so for testing purposes, when you toggle the path, you can actually see where he's gonna go. But if I take them off, now we have what our level is going to look like to our players. And so one of the things that you're trying to do is you're trying to avoid this guy, but we'll go take a look at what he does if we get too close. So if you get within his range, what he's going to do is try and smash your Mugu. So don't get close to them. And then once again, as he's walking around, one, two, three, four, five. And we win. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up and I'm going to show you what happens. Now what happens if we switch to the spicy Mugu who are pretty fragile and shoot them all? Well, we now don't have enough to win the level and essentially you lose. So make sure that you keep enough. There's another thing that we need to set up for every single level that we want to make. It's in the Mugu settings. So here what you can do is you can actually turn on whether you, which you want for your level. You must have one. So notice we can keep the thick or we can put all three. It's totally up to you. You may want to build a level where only one type is with you or where all three are. And you can also set the starting Mugu quantity all the way up to 30 or down to one. We have it set by default on 20 because we like throwing these guys around. But it's totally up to you when you're making your levels. Okay, so... Once again, let's take this monster out and we're gonna take a look at Mugu corpses. So, one of the problems that we have when we're going through these levels is that we run out of Mugu. So, we'll switch to the spicy. I'll kill a bunch of them. And now we don't, we've we got problems. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to get these guys to run into it and once they hit the Mugu corpse, they actually start to reproduce. So one of the things that you can set up within your levels is you can set these up in difficult places to reach so that you can actually kill a bunch of Mugu, but then reproduce those Mugu. And once again, I'm using the space bar to beckon them closer to me because part of this is just managing your little tribe. So we've used the, the skulls. We're going to head back to the plant. He needs five. He drops our bulb and we win. Now another thing that you can do is you can actually click on this guy 
and you can set the number of Mugu that he needs between 2 and 10 for now to actually complete the level. And notice on his tongue how the 10, it's 10 changes. That's how many Mugu you have to bring to actually get it to end the level. Okay, so we'll leave it at 6 for now. I'm going to take these away. And we're going to work on hazards. So the hazards themselves, we can set up lava pools. And there's many different shapes so that we can make the type of lava that we want. Long ones. We can set up water. Mushroom elevators, spikes, and my very favorite, turnips. Okay, so let's go back into play mode and we're going to take a look. So, the lava itself is something that will kill the Mugu when they walk on it, but they'll also kill the gardener if she touches it. So we get returns back. I'll show you once again with, with the water, it acts very much the same. But in this case, the gardener can cross. So what this lets you do is it lets you have situations where I have to shoot my Mugu over and then cross, and hopefully they stay alive. Also, one of the things to notice when you're making a level is if you just go back in and out of quick play mode to build mode, you're just gonna get all your Mugu back. It's a great way to test. So let's head over to here. Now, one of the things about these little turnips is that when you shoot them, a Mugu at them, they blow up, and they also chain react if they're close to each other. So one of the things that you can do is you can set up interesting situations where you use those if you don't have spicy Mugu to light fires to the forest. So what I'm going to do is, just to show you, I'm going to take some of these. We're going to go back in. We're going to start the chain reaction. And you'll see what happens. So notice that the foliage has caught fire and it'll actually burn down and go away. So one of the things you can do is you can use this to create chain reactions to open up areas for the gardener and Mugu to walk through. Now over here, one of these things that we have is a way to change levels. And so if we use the heavy Mugu, one of the things that the heavy Mugu have is they're a bit fat. They have weight to them. So you stack them on the elevator, the elevator comes down, you get on it. And then what you do is knock them all off so that there isn't weight, it raises up, and you can get to another level. So spikes are a hazard like the others. If we shoot the Mugu on them, if they're fat Mugu, if they're thick Mugu, they're just not going to die. But one of the things is, is that it does kill the gardener. So you can set these up however you want to protect against the gardener from walking. So that's just some of the hazards that we have available. Let's talk about, I'm actually gonna take a bunch of these away. So we also have a bunch of pretty cool stuff that you can put in, platforms, ramps, so notice that my ramp wasn't oriented the way that I wanted. What I'm using is my mouse scroll. It rotates for me. It's a quick and easy way to do it. So I'm gonna rotate with my mouse button, place, escape out of it. Now, one of the things that we can do is 
we can actually scale the object over here so notice that it gets bigger we're going to select these scale I'm going to rotate with my mouse button And one of the things you can also do is if you hit the shift key and use your mouse wheel, you can also do the scale. So this allows you to quickly scale with the mouse wheel and also quickly rotate. But once you have a, something selected, you can scale the object over here and you can rotate the object any way that you want as well. So there's two ways to do it. Now notice if we go back in, now we have some pretty big obstacles that we're going to have to deal with. Okay, we'll take some of these away. And so all of this now applies also to things like trees, where we can select the tree. Again, if you want to move it, you just pick it up and move it around. Rotate with your mouse wheel. Shift the mouse wheel shrinks or grows it. And then if we come in here like this, we also have all kinds of different plants that you can place, bulbs, different rock formations. If you ever see something off the menu like this, you can actually left click and drag and it gets you the rest of the options. And each of these can also, once we highlight it, I want to scale it. I can shift mouse and I can mouse wheel to rotate. So notice that we can stack these with our actual hazards to try and create really interesting different levels. And we also have little signposts that we can put in. And what it does is it allows you, if we can see, it allows you to rotate the arrow. So just in case you have a really complicated level, you can help show your players where you need to go. So why don't we exit out of this? And we'll go into a second one. And as you can see, the terrain is different in this. The plant's been placed at the top of the mountain, and the actual challenge in the level is to try and build a way to get up. And so what we'll do is we'll do the same thing. I'm gonna set some monsters. These are static monsters. Our pea shooters and our cabbage. So now what you'll see is the smash grass will actually, if you get close to it, it's turned turned the wrong way. So I'm gonna rotate it around. And you'll see what happens when we get close to it. So these are triggered by proximity. And you'll notice these little guys act as turrets. One of the things that you can do with them is you can adjust their rate of fire and the distance that they shoot. And so let's turn this guy around. We'll turn his rate of fire and his distance way up. And you'll notice that as we get close, he's gonna shoot real fast and a lot farther. And so with these guys, you can set up really interesting um, gauntlets that you have to run. And now which, with our cabbage guy, he's a proximity monster as well. Let's try that again. So this guy is a proximity monster. 
And when we enter into it, the minute he senses you, he's coming after you. And you need to get out of the way. So that's the basics of Maker Mode. Hope you guys have fun, make some great levels. Remember, you can upload as many levels as you want, and uh, let's win some money.